It's Monday, Martin Luther King holiday here in the United States, anyway. The rains have seemed to let up, at least uh, for uh, a little while. It's going to probably sprinkle on and off for the next day or so, but it looks like uh, the worst of this last storm has uh, has passed over. Today we're going to talk. Again, we're reading from the appendix section of uh, the Book of Thoth. And Crowley's going to talk briefly. Well, he says he's going to talk uh, about the Lust card which is in older decks, is called the Strength card. It's the path of Leo. And uh, which is, goes there between four and five. But really, he can't really talk about that without also talking about the Chariot card there, which is the path that leads across the abyss but sort of uh, the back road across the abyss, going from five to three. And uh, as uh, you can see there above the abyss, I've got uh, the beast as number two, or wisdom, and uh, or the, the all-father, and uh, Babylon, the, the mother there, uh, which is also called understanding. And you'll notice I've got uh, a flawlessly drawn uh, chalice there. And when I say that the charioteer is the delivery boy of the Holy Grail, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So with that understood, for s some profound reason, Crowley wanted us to uh, be meditating on uh, these two uh, visions that he had uh, during Enochian workings that are pertinent to both the chariot, see he's got the Holy Grail there, he's showing it to us there, and the lust card. Now, that's a very stylized, but nonetheless, that's the cup right there that Babylon is uh, holding in her hand. She's getting ready to deliver that to number two. She, uh, oh, excuse me. That's a better one. She's getting ready to deliver that to her sleeping husband over there. He's all tired out from the the but she's going to perk him up with that cup. She's going to tiptoe across the path that we can't see there. But anyway, I'm going to start by reading a footnote so I won't have to interrupt the, the text. Uh, the doctrine here set forth is identical with that of the whole mystery of perfection, understanding itself through experience of all imperfection, as explained elsewhere in this essay. So the mystery of perfection understanding itself through experience of all possible imperfection. I'm reminded of a, of a little uh, speech or a little talk uh, by Alan Watts. Uh, where he says, well, imagine if you're, you're God, you're the only, only uh, entity, conscious entity, uh, and you're bored. And so uh, uh, you start to uh, 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 fall asleep and dream to, to entertain yourself and uh, experience other lives and things like that. Uh, and then finally, you get bored of that after aeons and aeons of, 
of doing that. And then you, you say, wouldn't it really be fun if when I dream, I forget that I'm dreaming? And then somehow I have to, you know, get back to my myself that way. That would be a real adventure. Well, that is sort of the same thing. At least I'm seeing that as sort of the same thing that Crowley's saying when he says uh, uh, the mystery of perfection, understanding itself through experience of all possible imperfection. That's sort of like what we do with life, isn't it? Okay. Here we go. In Atu 7, the charioteer bears the grail from the great mother. Now, okay. now that's going down his path. It'd be the grail from the great mother. Here is the vision. The charioteer speaks in a low, solemn voice, awe-inspiring, like a very large and distant bell. Let him look upon the cup whose blood is mingled therein, for the wine of the cup is the blood of the saints. There it is at the bottom there. Glory unto the scarlet woman, Babylon, mother of abominations, that rideth upon the beast. For she hath spilt their blood in every corner of the earth, and lo, she has mingled it in the cup of her whoredom. With the breath of her kisses hath she fermented it, and it hath become the wine of the sacrament, the wine of the Sabbath. And in the holy assembly, she poured it out for her worshipers, and they have become drunken thereon, so that face to face they have beheld my Father. Thus they are made worthy to become partakers of the mystery of this holy vessel, for the blood is the life. So sitteth she from age to age, and the righteous are never weary of her kisses, and by her murders and fornications she has seduced the world, wherein is manifest the glory of my Father, who is truth. This wine is such, vir is such that its virtue radiateth through the cup, and I reel under the intoxication of it, and every thought is destroyed by it. It abideth alone, and its name is compassion. I understand by compassion the sacrament of suffering, partaken by the true worshippers of the highest, and it is an ecstasy in which there is no trace of pain. Its passivity and then in parentheses, he says, equals passion. Its pass passivity is like the giving up of the self to the beloved. The voice continues. This is the mystery of Babylon, the mother of abominations. And this is the mystery of her adulteries, for she hath yielded up herself to everything that liveth, and hath become a partaker of its mystery. And because she has made herself servant of each, therefore she has become mistress of all. Not as yet canst thou comprehend her glory. Beautiful art thou, O Babylon, and desirable. For thou hast given thyself to everything that liveth, and thy weakness hath subdued their strength. For in that union thou didst understand. 
Remember, understanding is the name of the third Sephiroth. For in that union thou didst understand, therefore thou art called understanding, O Babylon, Lady of Night, of the Night. This is that which is written, O my God, in one last rapture let me attain to the union with the many, for she is love, and her love is one. And she hath divided the one love into infinite loves, and each love is one and equal with the one. And therefore she has passed from the assembly and the law and the enlightenment into the anarchy of solitude and darkness. Forever thus must she veil the brilliance of her self. O Babylon, Babylon, thou mighty mother that rideth upon the crowned beast, let me be drunken upon the wine of thy fornications. Let thy kisses wanton me unto death, that even I, thy cupbearer, may understand. Now, through the ruddy glow of the cup, I may perceive far above and infinitely great the vision of Babylon, and the beast whereon she rideth is the lord of the city of the pyramids that I have beheld in the fourteenth aether. City of the pyramids is also another name for number three, Bina and the master of the temple. Now that is gone in the glow of the cup, and the angel saith, Not as yet mayest thou understand the mystery of the beast. Remember, that's number two. For it pertaineth not unto the mystery of this aether, or this air. And few that are newborn unto understanding are capable of it. In other words, the new, freshly minted master of the temple in number three is usually not equipped for the mind-blowingness of number two. Okay. The, club, the, the cup glows ever brighter and fierier. All my sense is unsteady, being smitten with ecstasy. And the angel saith, Blessed are the saints, that their blood is mingled in the cup and can never be separate any more. For Babylon the beautiful, the mother of abominations, hath sworn by her holy Ketis, whereof every point is a pang, that she will not rest from her adulteries until the cup of everything that liveth is gathered therein, and the wine thereof laid up and matured and consecrated, and worthy to gladden the heart of my father. For my father is weary with the stress of eld, and cometh not to her bed. Yet shall this perfect wine be the quintessence and the elixir, and by that draught thereof shall he renew his youth. And so shall it be eternally, as age by age the worlds do dissolve and change, and the universe unfoldeth itself as a rose, and shutteth itself up as the cross that is bent into the cube. And this is the comedy of Pan that is played at night in the thick forest. And this is the mystery of Dionysus Zagreus that is celebrated on the holy mountain of Catherion. And this is the secret of the brothers of the Holy Cross, excuse me, of the Rosy Cross. And this is the heart of the ritual that is accomplished in the vault of the adepts that is hidden in the mountain of the caverns even the holy mountain Abiagnus. And this is the meaning of the supper of Passover, the spilling of the blood of the lamb 
being a ritual of the Dark Brothers, for they have sealed up the pylon, or the doorway. They have sealed up the pylon with blood, lest the angel of death should enter therein. Thus do they shut themselves off from the company of saints. Thus do they keep themselves from compassion and from understanding. Accursed are they, for they have shut up their blood in their heart. They keep themselves from the kisses of my mother Babylon, and in their lonely fortresses they pray to a false moon, and they bind themselves together with an oath and with a great curse. And of their malice they conspire together, and they have power and, and mastery, and in their cauldrons do they brew the harsh wine of delusion mingled with the poison of their selfishness. Thus they make war upon the Holy One, sending forth their delusion upon men and upon everything that liveth, so that their false compassion is called compassion, and their false understanding is called understanding. For this is their most potent spell. Yet of their own poison do they perish, and in their lonely fortresses shall they be eaten up by time that hath cheated them to serve him, and by the mighty devil Karonzon, their master, whose name is the second death. For the blood that they have sprinkled on their pylon, as a, that is a bar against the angel of death, is the key by which he entereth in. So, Crowley has a comment or an excerpt that he wants to share with us concerning the art card or the old temperance card. And that will conclude uh, the appendix or the appendix, yes, the appendix of uh, uh, his comments on the uh, trump cards of the tarot, which we will do tomorrow. So until tomorrow, I can hear Constance in the chopping up vegetables for breakfast soup. All right. <laughs> so together we will say, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. They heard it. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>